Hello, hello, and welcome to Blah Blah Black Sheep, a weekly-ish, hopefully, podcast where I, Sarah Kors of SEK Handmade, answer your yarny questions. I'm going to be up front, right at the front. Things are a little different today. Um, so I appreciate your patience and, uh, you know, all the stuff, <laughs> I guess. We'll just get into it. Then you'll know what I'm talking about. All right, we're going to start normal-ish at the beginning. So I am wearing my um, Zoe shawl. Nice, lightweight summer shawl. Uh, we're quite pleasant here temperature-wise, which is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. Not too done up in all the things um because it's summertime um what is bringing me joy uh my friends um we're gonna talk uh more about this in like just a quick sec but i spent some time with some really close friends this last weekend and it was marvelous and it brought me so so much joy uh in a challenging time so i am so grateful for friends if you get a chance this week spend some time with a good friend even if so we moved um where are you going mister we moved um right right before the pandemic and so i spent a good chunk of time with no local friends um so but one of my favorite things to do was to schedule a time to chat with people and i would go walk and they would go walk and we would just chat together on the phone and it was super lovely. So even if you uh, spend time with a friend who's not close by, that's wonderful. So um, small businesses, I just realized I'm recording much later in the day because of all the things we'll talk about here in just a minute. Um, but I have, I have no beverage. <laughs> Maybe it'll keep me from talking too long, but I have no beverage. But I do have these gorgeous earrings. If you look at my um, pattern pictures, I wear these quite a bit for uh, taking pictures with different patterns because they're gorgeous and simple and they're from a local artist. They're by uh, Mandrel Metal. Nope, no, no, because I tried to hunt their, uh, all the things down and tried to put metal in it and it was, it was not there. Back up, try again. Um, it is called mandrel works jewelry again links in the show notes below so you don't need to worry about looking them up i've already done it for you but um local wisconsin um artisan makes the most gorgeous jewelry highly recommend wear it a lot and love it every time i do so that's my small business no mug today <laughs> this is what i get for recording later but made appointments and stuff this morning. So it's not happening. All right. So let me stop being elusive and we're going to talk about my trip to Portland. Um, I'm going to try Weston's being fidgety. Let me let him out. Um, I'm going to try to keep this a short, a shortish story. Go ahead. How'd you go? Come on. Good boy. Um, so, way back, a while ago, oh my gosh, I thought he just poked his head back in. He might be coming back. It's fine. Um, way back, uh, a group of crochet designers and some other um, crochet-y people um, got together in a group on Instagram, and we've been encouraging each other and supporting each other. We eventually called ourselves the Crochetmas Crew, and when and we became fast friends. We got the group together like right before the pandemic hit, and then everything shut down. And um, we have been chatting on Friday nights um, pretty regularly, um, and we just we chat all day every day and so once it was safe to travel again we decided we needed a retreat and so last summer um as many people as could came to chicago uh which was lovely and then this year we went to portland which was 
oh my gosh, amazing. I've never been to Portland. Um, we spent just a little time in Portland proper and then we went, oh gosh, somewhere else um, to stay at my friend Amber's house. And it was right on a lake and it was uh, just like half a mile from the ocean. It was amazing. It was amazing. That's all there is to it. So um, I met my friend Amber um, of Amber Bliss This, obviously, because we stayed at her house. Um, my friend Ashley of Triple Knots Crochet and my friend Michelle of Tales of Knots. Our friend Nicole of Handmade by Yarn Mama was supposed to be there and she got the flu right before she was supposed to fly. So we are very grateful that she did not get the flu while she was on the airplane or didn't bring the flu to all of us. <laughs> but we were so sad to miss her. So, um, so we all flew into Portland and then we spent the day in Portland visiting some yarn shops and I'll show you my yarn that I purchased at the end. I guess those would also be um, small businesses, kind of, for the most, I don't know how many of the yarns I bought would be considered a small business. But um, anyways, we went to uh, a yarn shop, a yarn shop, <laughs> a yarn store in um, Portland called Close Knits and it was very lovely. Uh, they had a lot of yarn in a very wide variety and um, yarns I had not seen before which was really cool. I always, my rule is when I travel I love to get a local yarn if I can, which I did, but also I love to get yarn that I can't get at my local yarn shop so I'm not looking for you know, more Malabrigo or anything like that. I can get that at my local yarn shop. So I'm looking for something new and different. Um, so they had lots of options and I had a very hard time picking. <laughs> so I highly recommend Close Knits if you are in Portland. It, it was lovely. The, um, I, I don't know if they're the owners, the employees were helpful and uh, knowledgeable and it was, it was quite lovely. Um, then we went and had lunch at a little French restaurant down the road. It was so delicious. Um, it was amazing. Uh, we, <laughs> one of us got a flight of, um, mimosas. They were amazing. Um, we shared a little bit and we each got a different, uh, meal. They were all delicious. Um, it was, it was so lovely. After lunch, then we went to Ritual Dyes, um, which I'm, I'm almost positive you'll recognize their logo. They are, um, a small, uh, dyer, but a pretty well-known one. So, um, we went to Ritual Dyes. We talked with uh, their staff member. She was lovely. Uh, they had, oh my gosh, could have bought the whole store. So much gorgeous yarn there. Um, and, and I bought one of, I bought a couple skeins of one of their colorways. And so that was my, my local, uh, Portland dyer purchase. So that was lots of fun. And then we went to, um, Starlight Knitting Society and, um, it was, it was gorgeous. Their shop is quite large. And so they had a whole bunch of really neat stuff. Um, I talked several episodes about, um, oh, now I'm losing the name. I'm pretty sure it's called Tuft Woolens. If I'm wrong, I'll put it up here somewhere. Um, and how I love their, um, hand balm. They had some scents there that I had not tried before. So it was fun to be able to smell them before purchasing. Cause usually I just purchase online. Um, so much gorgeous yarn, several local, uh, dyers. I did not buy a local dyer there. I bought, um, but I bought something I had not seen at, um, any other yarn shop I'd been to, which was a lot of fun. So that was gorgeous. Then we went to, oh, what's it called? Salt and straw for ice cream. You guys, it was amazing. Amber was like, everybody talks about this. I've never been. Um, 
and thanks bunny and um we went there and we were like oh that's why everybody's talking about it because it was amazing it was super delicious i had the coffee coffee nut lover or something it, oh it was so good it was so good um and then we went to the coast and we hung out we um we went to the ocean we went to this really cool um brewery that was right on the ocean um and so we like ate dinner and looked out over the ocean and um i had a delicious cider some fish and chips it was so good it was so good uh then we went out we walked on the beach we saw the sea lions we picked up the shells and um really cool rocks and stuff which was fun and um we did some kayaking we did lots of crocheting we went to a glass blower uh shop at, which was super cool so but we just we had a great time together and, and really 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 enjoyed it so hi highly recommend getting together with your friends and having a crochet weekend so let's talk let's talk about the yarn i got so shall we go in order? I'm going to knock everything down because they're in reverse order. Let me, let me move some stuff. Okay. So at the first yarn store, uh, close knit, like I said, I was looking for something I could not purchase at my local yarn shop and she had lot, they had lots of great stuff, but it's probably a year ago now. Um, I bought some yarn from a D stash just because I was curious. I had never seen it before. I had never heard of it before. Um, and it was called um, Plot Loopy, I think is how you pronounce it, or probably a very bad pronunciation of it. It's an Icelandic wool. Um, and the person who was doing the D-stash had like four skeins of gray, I think it was, or plates, I think they're actually called, of a gray. And I was like, that's fun. I mean, it was a very reasonable price. And uh, so I, I grabbed those up. And so I since then have been uh, watching a YouTube podcast, podcast here on YouTube, um, by a Norwegian, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure she's Norwegian, knitter and she has used quite a bit of unspun so it's made me all the more curious and excited to use my unspun but I had gray and I thought this shop had several um other colors and I thought you know I need a different color to go with my um with my gray so I got this really nice Kind of like a grassy green the fun thing about the unspun is that it's it's not solid there are lots of different colors in there so that should go just lovely with my gray i got i i got two two plates of it which means i have a lot <laughs> i have let's see they're over 300 yards which means if i have probably have close to 2000 yards, which is great because I would love to make like a, a really nice cardigan. Uh, the, the unspun traps a lot of air, which means it's super cozy. So like a big oversized cardigan would be so cozy in that. So that's what I bought at the first shop at Ritual Dyes. I bought some Ritual Dyes because amazing. I bought this gorgeous purplish color. It's called Belladonna. And, um, I said last time that I had a hole in my stash and it was DK weight yarn. And so I got it in DK weight. I was like, must, must get some DK weight. So, um, it's just, it's gorgeous and amazing. It's coming up pretty true on uh, screen. So I have two of those that I will design probably a shawl with. I say that and then things change, you know, we'll see. We'll see, but a little bit of DK, um, and that's gorgeous. So then at um, Starlight Knitting Society, I found some Brooklyn Tweed, which is, I don't, I don't, 
don't know a ton about them other than some big designers who design with their yarn. Um, I don't know how small they would be considered. Um, but they do some, oh gosh. <sighs> okay, good. I was going to say, I should have looked this up before I came on, but I did not. They do some woolen spun yarns. And so woolen spun yarns, uh, it's a different way of spinning the yarn and it traps air in the yarn, making it like these are, these are they're so lightweight, but what I'm obsessed with really is the colors. Let me scoot, let me scoot the labels down without completely scooting them off if I can. Okay, so this is Brooklyn Tweed Loft. It's American Targi and Columbia Wool. And then look at these, look at these. They're amazing. And so this is kind of a grayish pink almost, like, the main is gray, but it's got so many flecks of red in it that it really, um, really almost has a teeny bit of a pink hue to it. And then this one, this was the first one I saw and I was like, yes, must have. <laughs> and it has just flecks of yellow and like a really bold green. It is amazing. I love it. I love it. So those are both fingering weight and I got two of each of them. And so I will, I don't know, make a shawl maybe. Super excited about those. So I'm gonna put those there. And now I just looked down and I uh, realized I grabbed this thing to show you too. So when, when we get together, we often trade little gifts and we were staying, uh, the house we stayed at was actually Amber's parents house and so her mom wanted to make us gifts which was just like the sweetest thing ever so these are little boxes and then she cross-stitched these for each of us oh I have stuff inside mine <laughs> but it's so beautiful oh that was just the sweetest thing and uh, nobody appreciates a handmade gift like you know, people who hand make gifts. So that was so sweet and so, so thoughtful. Um, so yeah, I flew home on Monday and, um, and it was a lovely trip. No, no travel issues. My, my bags got to and fro. Uh, it had been a long time since I had flown. So if I'm being honest, I was incredibly nervous about it. Uh, not, I, I don't get nervous about the act of actually flying on the airplane. It's like the getting to the airport in time and like, what am I going to eat? And what if we get delayed? And what if my bag gets lost and all of that? So that all went very smoothly, which was lovely. Um, so yeah, it was a great trip and I'm happy. Happy to be back and sharing my little goodies with you guys. Um, so, I think I'm going to share a little. So, now, now I feel like we're going to get a little more serious here. Um, I want to share with you another answer to the I've lost my Crojo question. So, Here's the question again, if you, if you didn't have it memorized from a few episodes ago. So, uh, the question asker says, I've lost my crojo. I used to crochet to relax, but lately every project seems to be adding stress to my life or is just unsatisfying. What are your tips for getting out of this slump? Okay. I would like to restate that that is really, really hard. Um, when the thing that buoyed your mental health is now dragging your mental health down, um, it's, it's not great. <laughs> um, I want to say lots of unfamily friendly things, but I won't. Um, it stinks. It's, it's a big bummer. So here's, here's the thing that I want to say that, um, probably we don't want to hear if I'm being honest. And here's the thing. 
when you no longer enjoy the things that used to bring you joy, that might, now, I'm not a psychologist, not a doctor, just a person who struggles from time to time. <laughs> but when the thing that brought you a lot of joy is now bringing you stress, a lot of times that is an indicator of other problems. Other things in your life that are causing you stress um, and deeper mental health issues that need to be dealt with. I spent a really, really, really long time in my life having mental health issues, but thinking they weren't bad enough. You know, I, my life didn't come to a still standstill. I, I wasn't not getting out of bed in the morning. Um, I was still powering through, so I had to be okay, right? No, 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 the answer to that is no. Uh, and, and so I urge you to look at, like, the world does not have to be crumbling down for you to need help. Um, and so the sooner you can find your cues that tell you you're off in your mental health area, and this doesn't have to be like horrible need, you know, big intervention things. It can just be your crochet doesn't bring you joy anymore. You find yourself avoiding things that used to bring you joy. You find tasks that used to not be a big deal piling up. Once you find those cues for you, for me, I have some physical cues that I thought, like I blamed for a long time on other things. Like, um, I get patches of itchy skin and like no matter how much I hydrate, they just won't go away. That's because they're coming from the inside and not the outside. Um, so I encourage you that if those things that gave you joy are not, to maybe step back and take a real good evaluation of your mental health and, and to get help because there's nothing wrong with getting help and uh, you're not, you're not, not, not bad enough to reach out for help and you're not, um, you're not any less because you need some help. So if you've lost your crow, Joe, check in, check in with someone who can help you evaluate whether that's a professional or your sister. My sister's real good at being like, you've tipped, you've tipped over the top, Sarah. It's time to take a step back and get some help. Um, and just be honest with yourself. So along those veins of mental health, um, I, I wanted to let you all know that I may um, disappear for a little bit. Um, my hope is to not fully disappear, but um, we just extremely recently found out that my mom is very ill. Um, what exactly is going on, we're not sure, but it is very evident that it's an all hands on deck uh, kind of situation. And so I'm going to be spending a lot of time traveling back and forth. Um, this is the reason we moved to be closer to family so that, and part of the reason why I have the job I ha have so that I, we were very intentional about our family structure for me to be available for uh, crises and emergencies of all kinds. So um, the one thing I see slipping away though is probably this podcast because I'm not going to be home much and it's highly possible that when I am home, that it's uh, a home for a little bit, essentially to check back in with my family only to go back 
to uh, be with my my uh, childhood first first family. I don't know how you say that. My sister and my parents, uh, and sometimes my brother. He's in Arizona, so he has a little harder time getting up there. But uh, um, yeah, so I didn't want to just disappear and have you wonder. I'm, I'm bummed. I love doing the podcast. Um, and who knows, maybe we'll get into a routine of traveling back and forth and, and I'll pop up every once in a while. Um, but I, I didn't want to leave you wondering because I appreciate you guys. You're a wonderful community and a wonderful support. And, um, even if it takes a while, I, I fully intend to get back to this because I enjoy it so much. So a short little episode here between trips. I'm headed off again to be with my mom and my sister and that family. Um, so thank you for understanding and being wonderful. Please take care of yourself. I'm going to do the best I can to take care of myself and both families. Um, but it's a it's a, it's a big job we women have where we care for all the people and we often um, don't care enough for ourselves. So take care of yourself. I will be working hard to take care of me and um, that might be why, that is going to be why I'm almost definitely not as present as I used to be. So. Spend some time with your friends and family. Do something to care for yourself. And hopefully we will see each other here again soon. Happy crafting, guys. Okay, so if you look at the dates on this video compared to the last video, you'll realize that I did exactly what I didn't want to do. And that is I just kind of poof, disappeared with no explanation. I had, I had plans. I always have plans. I had plans that um, I was home for one day between my trip and going um, to spend time with uh, my mom and my dad and that part of my family. And I thought, well, there'll be lots of downtime to just like edit that video and get it, get it posted up. Um, I was very wrong. Uh, <laughs> um, when I got to the hospital, we got a diagnosis for my mom and she was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Um, and from there, everything was all consuming. There were lots of complications, lots of time talking to nurses and running tests and doing all the hospital-y things. And I got, I got nothing outside of a few stitches and an email sent out done. And so, um, so for that, I apologize. That was not how I wanted that to go down, but true to what I said previously, uh, family was top priority. And once I got there and realized that things were, uh, more serious and more intense than I thought they were going to be, that just got let go. Um, so I guess the updated situation is that, um, I got, to the hospital. We got an official diagnosis that day. And then a week later, my mom passed away. Um, it was, sorry, incredibly shocking. Even with the diagnosis, we didn't think she would go that fast. Um, but I'm also incredibly grateful because the diagnosis of cancer was very scary, partly because I know that can be a really long drawn out and painful way to pass. And so I'm really grateful that um, she passed very peacefully and that she was almost never in pain. Um, so there you go. That's where we're at now. Um, I'm home. I spent a good chunk of time after she passed with my brother and my sister at home, helping my dad adjust. Whatever that means, that's not something you can do in a few days, but we tried our best. And um, I'm home now for a while, and um, I'm going to try to be kind with myself, but I'm also the type of person who really likes routine. And so my hope is to get back into a routine. 
um, which means doing this podcast, which is one of the things I really, really love and enjoy. Um, I'm going to, I'm also the type of personality who like dives into work to avoid feelings. So I'm going to try to find a balance there. Um, so love your loved ones and thanks for being here. And, um, we'll talk again soon. Happy crafting.